Hi, welcome to the new lecture. And this block is devoted to calculating correlation coefficient for continuous numerical variables. So in general, correlation stands for the measure of to what extent two variables tend to co-move or move in the opposite directions. And typically for continuous numerical variables, we calculate Pearson coefficient. So Pearson coefficient is used for assessing the direction and magnitude of the linear relationship between two continuous numerical variables. So its maximum value is positive one and it indicates an extremely strong positive linear relationship between two variables and the minimum value is negative one which indicates an extremely strong negative linear relationship between two variables. So in order to be able to calculate Pearson coefficient, you need to make sure that the following assumptions are fulfilled. First, both variables have to be continuous. Second, both variables should be normally distributed. Third, there should be no outliers. And finally, the relationship should be linear. Okay, so let us discuss what it means precisely to observe a linear relationship between two variables. For this purpose, you can use scatter plots, as we are going to discuss uh, in the very last video of this lecture. So basically, you put data on a graph and you try to figure out the main trend. For instance, if your data is distributed in this manner, then you are dealing with monotonic linear relationship. And of course, any linear relationship is monotonic by definition. Basically, monotonicity of the function means that function is decreasing all the time or increasing all the time. For instance, on this graph, I mean left-hand side, you can see that each time the value of x increases, the value of y decreases and vice versa. Also, when x increases by one unit, then y always decreases by n units, where n stands for the slope of this line. So, Again, the magnitude of change of y is always the same. Here, on the right-hand side, you can see an example of monotonic yet non-linear relationship. Here, the function is decreasing, so each time you increase the value of x, the value of y decreases, and this is true for any point on this function. However, this function is definitely not linear. So the slope is dependent on the value of x. It is steep for the relatively low value of x and it's relatively flat for the relatively high values of x. That's why in this case, for monotonic linear relationship, you can use Pearson coefficient. However, in this case, it's not recommended. There is an alternative, as we are going to discuss in the next video, but for this purpose, we are going to use a different correlation coefficient. Finally, I would like to present you an example of non-monotonic, non-linear relationship. So this function is definitely non-monotonic, because until it reaches this point, the function is increasing, and then it is a decreasing function. So yeah, actually in this, in this case, you cannot really calculate any kind of correlation coefficient. So, you know, even though in this case, it's still possi possible to apply some alternative, in this case, you can never go for correlation. So if you wonder whether there are any two variables which might be described by this kind of relationship, I can bring you some canonical example which is the relationship between age and income. So put it like this, when you are relatively young and unexperienced, 
your income is going to increase together with your age. Then you reach this point, age x years, and then your income starts to decrease when you become older. So you become less productive, you have some problems with keeping up, you know, doing additional training, learning new stuff. So yeah, that's why this relationship is negative. Of course, in order to detect this age x, uh, you have to run some kind of regression because it's going to be different. It's dependent on cultural things, labor market arrangements and other things. But yeah, nevertheless, it's going to be described by this kind of inverted U-shaped relationship. Okay, so just to summarize, you can only apply Pearson coefficient in this case when you are dealing with linear relationship or quasi-linear relationship. So if all of those assumptions are fulfilled, then you can calculate Pearson coefficient using the following formula. So here x and y stand for continuous numerical variables and stands for the number of observations and correlation coefficient is denoted by r. I know it seems a little bit terrifying, I mean, when you look at this formula, but in a moment I will show you how to calculate Pearson coefficient step by step. So let us consider the following problem. Uh, we have 12 patients and we want to analyze whether there is any correlation between the period of therapy measured in month and subjective well-being. So basically people self-report um, how well they feel, you know, calm, satisfied, and so on. So having this data, you have to calculate the product of x and y for each patient. You have to calculate the square of x and the square of y. And then you have to find the sum for each column does not seem to be complicated. So finally, we can apply the formula we discussed before. So here n is equal to 10, we have 10 observations. Uh, the sum of all the products of x and y is equal to 1019.9, so we put this value here. Then you have to find the product of uh, sums for all the values of x and all the values of y. So here we are uh, 118 and 79.2 respectively. Here we still have 10 observations. So this one stands for the sum of all the squares of x. So here we are. It's uh, 1764. And you have to subtract the square of the sum of x. So yeah, here you have to take the sum of all the values of x and put it to the power of 2. You repeat this algorithm for y. And finally, you compute the calculations. And we know that the value of Pearson correlation coefficient in our case is equal to 0. 0.812. So I already mentioned at the beginning of this video that the maximum possible value indicating a very strong positive linear relationship is positive 1. So here we do not have a positive 1 exactly, but this value is pretty close nevertheless. So in conclusion, we can report quite a strong positive linear relationship between two variables, I mean the period of attending therapy and subjective well-being, which makes a, common, a perfect common sense for me. However, you still cannot tell anything regarding the level of statistical significance. Basically, we want to figure out whether the correlation coefficient we have calculated is different from zero in case of two-tailed test or bigger than zero in case of one-tailed test. Because actually the value of correlation coefficient equal to zero indicates that two variables are not related at all. 
so you cannot find any link between them. And here we are going to investigate whether this is true for our particular case. So, uh, because of those assumptions about normally distributed random uh, variables uh, we discussed before, you can analyze statistical significance of Pearson coefficient using t-distribution. So this is the formula using which you calculate the statistic for Pearson coefficient. So here we have 8 degrees of freedom. In order to get the number of degrees of freedom, you have to subtract 2 because we have two variables. So we have 8 degrees of freedom. The value of correlation coefficient is equal to 0. Point at 112. So this statistic is 3.93. Again, even for uh, this number of degrees of freedom, it's pretty high, as you can figure out. Uh, definitely bigger than 2. So using the rule of thumb, we can already say it's going to be statistically significant, at least at 10% level of significance. But we can use Gretel in order to calculate precise p-value. So for 8 degrees of freedom and this value of the statistic, this is p-value for two-tailed test, less than 1%. For one-tailed test, I mean when you want to examine whether this correlation coefficient is bigger than 0, you have to split this value by half. So basically, we can reject the null hypothesis at 1% significance level. And here, we can reject both null hypothesis that this correlation coefficient is equal to 0 and that it's equal to 0 or smaller than 0. I mean, both for one-tailed and two-tailed test. So yes, we can indeed conclude that there is a strong positive linear relationship between the period of attending therapy expressed in month and self-reported subjective well-being. So that was it when it comes to Pearson correlation coefficient. In the next video I will tell you uh, how we deal when at least one of the assumptions we listed at the beginning of this video is not fulfilled. So what is the alternative? So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.